A very warm welcome to everybody to this um, COVID version of the Global Enterprise Experience. Um, it's been a rapid learning curve since one o'clock this afternoon to be able to convert this to an online event. Um, but here we are, and here we go. And one of the joys of this is that we've managed to send out to the 1,360 participants around the world saying, you don't have to fly to New Zealand, you can join us. So a very, very welcome, haere mai, to both those of you who are here in New Zealand and those who are joining us from overseas. Um, I'd like to give my thanks to our host, and he was going to host us in Parliament, but he's hosting us for this event tonight, the Honourable Dr. David Clark, who's the Minister of Digital Edu Economy and Communications, hugely relevant to this contest, state-owned enterprises, because you know, we've got coaching involved and how do we grow these innovative organizations that can be world changing. And he's got a few other hats as well, and I haven't listed them all, but Minister, thank you very much for um, both hosting us and pivoting to an online event. I'd also like to thank Victoria University of Wellington. This is, um, you can see in the background Parliament where we're supposed to be in Victoria University where uh, many of our students are studying. They have been the principal sponsor of this event for 18 years. And this year we had 92 students. Some of them were part of a Management 317 and had as a part of a course. And some of them were volunteers just growing as leaders. So to all of you, a warm thank you. And I'd also like to thank the University of Otago Business School that they're a sponsor. And they put on 79 students this year. And what's magic about them is we say, look, we've had so many enrollments, how many of you would like to lead? So we had big numbers of Otago students were leading global teams this year, along with um, University of Sussex, uh, Nottingham in the UK, um, uh, Mammoth in uh, Ireland, the uh, Kathmandu University of Management in Nepal, uh, the University of Johannesburg in South Africa, um, and Alliant University in its America, all offered uh, leaders who stepped up to say, yep, they're going to take on the challenge. So that's been fantastic. Now, I was going to wear this beautiful Māori um, uh, korowai. It's a cloak. It was gifted for winning the United Nations Alliance of Civilizations and BMW Group's Intercultural Innovation Award because we're about being successful and growing leaders for a future world. And this year has been no exception. In fact, there's um, been such large numbers uh, this year. So, you know, what are we about? How do we have leaders to solve world issues? The big stuff, climate change and refugees and plastics pollution and all these things I read about in the 168 uh, proposals that came in. How do we build cross-cultural relationships and partnerships? Not just relationships, but how do we genuinely work in partnership? And here in New Zealand, we you know, it's a slow process, but we're finally learning what does it mean to really be in partnership with Indigenous peoples and others who come to this country? And how can we use business as a way for self-sustaining solutions? So rather than demanding that government and aid agencies cough up, how can we as individuals change the world, do it sustainably by making a profit? So... This year, for those who are, who are guests and haven't um, um, battled your way through this experience, um, there were teams of eight across different worldviews and cultures and time zones. So, um, and so those teams had to work together to develop a six page business concept proposal for a profitable venture that fosters a United Nations Sustainable Development Goal. And they had to do it with limited capital. We didn't say exactly how limited, but we did say we've got $4,000 for the winner, but you had to find a way to make it happen. So, um, you know, really tough challenge. But part of the point behind the limited capital was to say, let's not make this a theoretical exercise. Let's make this about what does it take to, for you to actually make it happen and imagine yourselves doing it. And for many of you to step in and actually doing it. So this year we had uh, 1,800 uh, enrollments, of which we knocked it down to 1,360. These are the countries that participated. There were 200 universities and organizations, and they came from 55 countries this year. And then the, the teams required at the outset to find a way to talk to each other. And they did. They used uh, 47 technologies this year. 
So there's a bunch there and more technologies and more technologies and more technologies. And can I let you know that almost none of those technologies work in China? And yet we had 120 students from China. So the teams that had Chinese in, in their um and the leaders of the Chinese and their teams had to be very creative and find ways to be able to communicate with China and the rest of the world. It was just one more little extra challenge because there really weren't, weren't enough challenges going before that. So, so all of these folks from different parts of the world, teams of eight, had to work in unity and jointly develop some creative solutions. So what we did was we, we uh, had some leaders uh, for those who are not in New Zealand, this is one of our famous rugby players who was uh, the captain of the All Blacks when they won almost all of their matches for nearly a decade. Um, so, you know, he's one of our favoured leaders. But we assigned leaders to teams and we trained some of these leaders beforehand. And then some belatedly, um, just before the start, said, yep, we need an extra 86 leaders, please help. So we quickly provided some training for them. And then about another 80-odd students who stepped up during the contest and said, I'm taking a leadership role. And for most of those, we managed to add them into the platforms of training and support and coaching. Not everyone. We didn't catch them, all of them, until the, uh, after the end. And these are people we call peer leaders. Every single person in this contest is expected to be a peer leader. Everybody is jointly responsible for the team's creativity and productivity and performance, for decision making and for unity and for helping others to succeed. And some of people in this contest really stepped up. And to those who did, I want to tell you that being a peer leader is many ways harder than being a leader. When there's a problem, and when you say, that's me, I'm going to step up without the hat, without the authority, without all of the reasons why people should look to you. Um, and of course, I've got this wonderful photo of Greta here who did just that. And look at the power of this young girl who said, there's a problem, I'm going to take some action. So part of this contest is how do all of us see what needs to be done and step up and make a difference? And my deepest, deepest admiration to those in the teams who were just phenomenal peer leaders. And some were invited, some had a problem, some stepped up, some managed with some really difficult circumstances. And then this year we had these leader coaches and we reached out to, many of them were, were leaders from previous uh, years, they, they knew about the G um, and had been very, very successful in past years, so over the last 18 years. Some of them uh, we got through the Council for International Development um, some of them uh, we got through the United Nations uh, Association of New Zealand. Some of them we got through IPANS, which is about growing leaders for the public sector. And we trained up these, uh, these coaches and 44 of them went on to coach. And those 44 gifted 500 hours of personal coaching to our leaders. Um, and I've just been reading the, uh, my 317's coaching assignment and I tell you what, it, gosh, it makes your heart sing, the, the, the profound impact that people have when they say, I need to coach others and find a way to hear and listen and uplift others to succeed. So my deepest gratitude to our coaches as well. Um, so this is about social entrepreneurship. How do you have a social and environmental impact and make enough profit to be self-sustaining? And we also want to grow our people to be people who make ideas happen. And my gosh, it takes courage. And when we looked at the new venture award, we're finding the ones who would go over that waterfall just like that, saying, right, let me go. I'm going to make it happen. I have the courage to make decisions and to act. So we got your 168 proposals. We've got a, um, a thousand um, uh, reflections. And Gina and I and, and some others read through these um, and we've got some colleagues to get it down to the best ones. And it went out to our phenomenal judges. So I'd like to firstly thank mm. these judges, the Right Honourable Helen Clark. Um, she was Prime Minister of New Zealand, a remarkable Prime Minister for nine years. And she was also head of the United Nations Development Programme for eight years. And she's currently um, 
responsible for looking for the United Nations at COVID. So huge responsibilities. And yet she she was finding time for looking at your work. So congratulations on that. Grant McPherson is the Chief Executive Officer of the Education New Zealand. It's a multi-billion dollar business to New Zealand. Came to a bit of a screeching halt with COVID. And we're about to rebuild with power to uh, to find ways to engage with the rest of the world to, um, with, uh, with export education. Giselle Weybrook is a special advisor of the United Nations Global Compact, and she's working with 700 universities around the world on how to bring the responsible principles of responsible management education. Thank you, Giselle. And thank you to James Lord, who's the manager for workforce leadership um, with the uh, Taitura, they just changed their name, they were called Solgam, and they're responsible for all the leadership development for our 93 local uh, authorities here in New Zealand. So huge thanks to our five judges for the work that you've done. And sorry, my fifth judge, Rebecca Stephen smith She's head of scholarships improvement for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade, did an absolutely sterling job, and has previous experience at actually understanding about social enterprises. And I also want to pass out a special thanks to our chief coach, to Anelda Mayo. She gifted 160 hours of coaching time to our coaches, plus uh, presenting and designing up our coaching program. So again, a remarkable achievement of gifted time. Thank you, Anelda, you're, you're a complete star. So Minister, can I hand over to you now, please, for, uh, for your insights and thoughts uh, for our audience here on the Global Enterprise Experience. Kia ora, e ngā mana, e ngā reo, e ngā karanga maha o tua. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou nā uh, katoa. Uh, ki ngā na, mana whenua, ko uh, Taranaki Whanui, te ati awa, ko ngā ti tōranga tira, uh, tēnā koutou. Nō kutu honarei, ki haere mai, ki te whakanuia tēnei huihui ngā whakahirehira. Nō reira, ngā manaki tanga, ki runga, i a tātou katoa, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa. Um, can I uh, welcome you all uh, virtually to the Parliament? Um, we are all uh, a little more socially distanced here than we were uh, 24 hours ago, and uh, what a difference a day makes. Um, can I acknowledge from the outset, uh, Deb, your leadership of this program and facilitation with your team of uh, a virtual event at very short notice as uh, Wellington uh, scrambles to make sure that it does the best by its citizens in keeping uh, COVID at bay. Can I acknowledge uh, those who've taken an interest in the program, the judges you've just introduced, um, the Right Honourable Helen Clark, those with uh, foreign affairs, UN uh, and education connections, um, ambassadors who've taken an interest, um, representatives from Victoria University, uh, Otago University, of course, the business school actually down just down the road from where I live, um, universities, I, you know, UK, USA, uh, and uh, South Africa um, and around the world, such a global interest in this program. Uh, can I congratulate you and thank you and welcome you uh, to this uh, event today? Um, look, growing ethical leaders is such an important thing for our country and it's such an important thing for the world. And uh, as I understand the program, that's one of the, the very real outcomes from your ethic efforts. Um, international connections are a driver of productivity um, and the global enterprise experience um, builds connections, uh, connects New Zealanders with the world and, and the world with New Zealand uh, and you all with each other. And we know that experiential learning, getting out there and doing things, uh, making those connections and sharing the lessons is crucial for uh, lifting the capacity of all who are involved. Um, the experiences and skills you will have developed through this uh, program will, um, and in bringing um, your skills to bear on real global challenges across borders, um, will uh, benefit others. Um, and I trust you too will take something away from it. It will be something uh, that helps with the transformation of our countries to better understand the opportunities and the digital context and how we can uh, best use it to create sustainable, inclusive, uh, prosperous and peaceful communities. Um, as the Minister of Digital Economy and Communications, um, it is delightful to see a program like this able to be delivered online. And indeed, uh, now also an awards ceremony 
um, delivered online as an added bonus um, if we're looking for the silver linings here. Uh, this shows just what is possible uh, when there's a will. Um, and I'm sure you will all have stories about how this technology has enabled you uh, as a team to connect with people who may have different views and perspectives. And also at times the technology uh, will have been frustrating. And uh, I know we all need a mixture of both. Um, but building a, a global team and global networks uh, takes courage and persistence. And can I acknowledge that uh, in all of you in your efforts? I mean, 55 countries, 1,360 participants. Uh, I think I heard you say, uh, Deb, 168 proposals. Um, this is a really significant program. Um, previously, I myself have had the experience of uh, an overseas um, uh, fellowship called an Eisenhower Fellowship in the United States of America, which sought to build connections across uh, a range of countries present. Uh, and I've seen the way in which um, that program, which was in 2013, uh, the connections have remained from people from 21 different countries, uh, all of whom uh, have leadership roles in their own countries in one way or another, and all of whom are committed to a more peaceful and prosperous uh, world into the future. Those connections built through a program like this have lasting impacts on our own lives, but also on the communities around us. And I've seen that uh, in education programs being rolled out, in, in friends and connections being made beyond the, the original program uh, for the benefit of educational outcomes and actually contributing towards things that are included in the Sustainable Development Goals. I've also seen in my own community uh, a small program on campus at Otago University called P3 being set up again to implement sustainable development goals uh, where volunteers come together and compete uh, again in a not-for-profit uh, way to try and implement goals. And I've seen the impacts there. Uh, winners going on to set up renewable power schemes in the Pacific Islands. So, um, and, and those who uh, have simply participated, going away and taking their ideas and making the world a better place without even the winnings or the capital, um, applying the learnings from the program and the connect and building on the connections that are built through those experiences. Um, part of my job uh, as the local uh, minister responsible for digital economy is to build a strategy so that New Zealand itself uh, begins to look at how it can maximise uh, the benefits of being online uh, for its citizens and um, to, to share a little of that. Uh, we're looking at how we can build on an Indigenous uh, model, looking at um, the, the kind of way in which trust is built, what we're calling mahi tika, uh, mahi tahi, the, the working together and the benefits of including everybody in our success, uh, and mahi ake, looking at the, the productivity gains from, from a digital world. Now, I'm sure those will be some of the same things that you'll be looking at in your programs, uh, and I congratulate you as you have employed some of those concepts, no doubt, in the projects that you have uh, developed through your work. Um, so I don't want to say much more because the exciting awards lie ahead, but I do want to congratulate you, to thank you for the volunteering that's been involved in this program, to thank you for being willing to put yourselves forward and out there uh, in, in a competition uh, where your efforts uh, are open to challenge from peers, from colleagues in other countries. Uh, they're looked at by judges uh, and people will be sharing that whole time their own experiences, which others will benefit from. But you've put yourselves forward. You've taken a risk. You've chosen to get involved uh, in a program that aims to make the world a better place. So can I congratulate you all? Can I congratulate tonight's winners ahead of time? Uh, but a special congratulations to everybody who has participated. Uh, and thank you to the organisers. I wish you all the very best. Uh, and thank you for the opportunity to speak with you and to be a part of this evening's celebrations. No reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa. Kia ora, Minister. Thank you very much for uh, your wonderful words there. Uh, we appreciate you hosting us and your, your uh, contribution towards building the kind of society that we all wish to live in.